Hey everyone, it's Albie. Welcome back to my channel. I have a review for you today. I just finished How to Be a Wallflower by Eloisa James. This is book one in her new series entitled The A Would Be Wallflowers. So this is book one. It was absolutely wonderful. So I am very excited for this new series and I look forward to the next book to come out. Um, she hasn't said if they'll come out in the fall, if it'll be a, a once a year sort of thing, but hopefully book two will be coming very soon. So our heroine in this novel is Cleopatra Lewis. She goes by Cleo, and she is an heiress, but she's sort of an heiress in a kind of comical sense. Her family um, are the heirs of a very large and um, prosperous, you know, wealthy commode company so her family is royal uh, not royal is rich in toilets essentially so her family are like the, have a toilet empire a commode empire so to speak so I found that to be very funny it kind of reminded me of um, Mean Girls where Gretchen Wieners is the heiress to Toaster Strudel basically so I thought it was pretty funny that Cleopatra is a commode heiress I thought that was pretty hilarious so she is coming into a new life, so to speak. Her mother, who was a very acclaimed actress, actress, unfortunately passed away about 10 months prior to the novel. And with the passing of her mother, she has found some lost family members, including her living grandfather, who was a Viscount. So now that she is about to enter into polite society, um, Cleopatra will be, you know, going to balls and events and having to be basically courted to be finding a husband. Well, Cleopatra decides, you know, that's not really what she wants to do. So, in, she's known as a great beauty, but she wants to sort of disguise all that. And she goes to a costume shop that has wonderful clothes and wonderful seamstresses to get a whole new wardrobe so that she can look like a dowdy wallflower. She doesn't want to be presented as a beautiful object for the, the tons elite to, you know, try to win over. She wants to be a wallflower even though she really isn't one. So I found that kind of comical that we have someone that has beauty and grace and all these wonderful attributes but she kind of wants to hide that and on, hide it on purpose. She wants to put herself in disguise as to not attract the attention she doesn't really want to have. And so while there, she meets Martha, I believe, and she is the head seamstress of the theater company. And I don't know if her mother performed at the company or if it's just sort of, you know, she knows the company because of her mother, etc. But she strikes up conversation with Martha and the other seamstresses to find out that they are being forced to move to the Americas, you know. <laughs> they have to leave England because this John, not John, Jacob, Jacob Astor Addison is taking over the company. He wants to hire the actors and all the best people to come to the Americas to set up a theater company there that's very renowned and prestigious like the Theater Emporium in London. So um, when Cleopatra, Cleo is there, she meets John, oh, John, Jacob, his grand, his uncle, his great uncle is John Jacob, but he is Jacob. So she meets Jacob and she and him butt heads. They are not into one another. He makes snide and rude comments that show that he's not gentleman-like. She can tell right away that he is an American. He is very unkempt. He has messy hair, dirty boots. His neck is visible. He doesn't have any sort of wig or anything. His hair is just rough and wild. He's very large and brooding and sort of grumpy. And he makes a distasteful joke involving um, commodes, which she does not appreciate being a commode heiress. <laughs> so... The two definitely start off as an enemies to lovers romance, which I quite enjoy those very much so. And some other tropes we have are the hero falls in love first. So Jacob, you know, the wilds and beauty of Cleo are not enough to surpass, are not enough to suppress um, 
or keep the hate that he has for or the distaste and love grows instead. So just really enjoyed the story. I loved all the humor between them, especially all the banter because it really was a strong um, enemies to lovers. There was a lot of distaste, a lot of, I can't believe you, you're a wild American, you're a lady, but you don't necessarily act like a lady and all this sort of stuff. And I absolutely loved all of that. I love good banter and I love that good um, juxtaposition between a lady like English Rose and this wild, brooding American man that's disrupted everything around our he our heroine. So absolutely love that. Some other tropes that were really fun in the story was, um, well, he fell in love first. That was one. And then Eloisa James in one of her TikToks, I believe, said that it was a Cinderella story in reverse. Um, I do agree with that. It does have a slight Cinderella characteristic or trope. But to me, it was more of that Pygmalion slash My Fair Lady slash She's All That slash the new 2020 He's All That. So if you know more of the My Fair Lady, which is based on the play Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw, which is based on the mythology, I believe, of Pygmalion. I'm not fully sure about that. Um, you know, we have the Professor H Henry Higgins. Yeah, just you wait and read Higgins. Yeah, that must be it. <laughs> So Henry Higgins and Eliza Doolittle, and she's this rough, tumbling, you know, flower girl, and he wants to, to make her, you know, a bright, could be duchess of English society. And we sort of have that in the story with um, Cleo wanting to go from beautiful flower, could be duchess, to a wallflower, you know, kind of dowdy, kind of like, what is she doing? She's in disguise, obviously. And then we have Jacob, and he sort of wants a makeover near the end of the story. So um, he wants to sort of show off to Cleo what she could be missing. He could be this dashing English gentleman. He doesn't have to be this wild, untamed American. And so he has Martha create a wardrobe for him to make him look more genteel. Well, are men genteel? I think so. Genteel and, you know, more appropriate for the lavish English society gatherings he'll be partaking in. So I haven't watched it, but I know, I think in 2020 or 2021, they did a gender swap of She's All That from the 90s, which is a modernization of My Fair Lady, a.k.a. Pygmalion by George Bernard Shaw, a.k.a., you know, blah, blah, blah. Um, but, um, I believe in that he was also like this nerdy guy and they made him, you know, hot for the prom court or whatever. I'm not quite sure, but I really did enjoy that trope of having the man sort of have to step it up in the looks department. I thought that was really refreshing. I hadn't seen that in a novel, let alone a romance novel. So I liked that Jacob had to sort of woo her with, um, I guess, not silly ideas, but frivolous, you know, beauty isn't everything and fitting into the society mold isn't everything. But in a lot of novels, specifically romance novels, we have um, really sort of embraced the idea of women dolling themselves up to make it work for their surroundings. I mean, essentially, that kind of is Cinderella. I mean, without having like the wicked stepmother and the mice and all that, it really is a girl just sort of doing a deep self-care day, getting her hair done, her, her makeup done, her dress on, and then bam, she's a princess sort of, sort of thing. I mean, hope I didn't burst any Cinderella bubbles out there, but I mean, kind of sort of what happens. But I like that in this story, we had Jacob that had to sort of do the um, cringy almost movie makeover moment, if you, so to speak. But I absolutely loved that. I thought it was fun. Um, there were a few twists near the ends, but honestly, it was just a really fun, straightforward historical romance that I highly enjoyed. I don't know if this is a new trend, but lately the newer published romance novels have featured the characters using French letters or uh, condoms of some sort. So I don't know if they're trying to modernize a little thing, have people 
use protection because I usually in romance novels, like historicals, there's like no mention of condoms or anything usually. So, and that's sort of the reason why they'll get married pretty soon or whatever. So I don't know if that's a new thing or if it's, you know, being pushed by publishers, make sure people are being safe, especially the readers, you know, in real life, so to speak. I know that there was, there was contraceptives back in the 1800s and so on. I mean, since forever there's been something, but I don't know if that's been a new push or what's going on because usually it's just like, oh, okay, they're using protection. That's different for <laughs> historicals, but you know, I just thought interesting. Um, I will say there is um, the trigger warning for loss of parents. And like I said, it's uh, Cleo is pretty fresh from her mother's passing. So that might be a trigger you need to wait on for this story to enjoy. But I did enjoy that even though Cleo's mother has passed, she's sort of a character, especially in the head of Cleo. So Cleo's trying to live her life and she'll get these little blurbs from her mother that are really funny. And the mother sort of knows what's going on and what's going to happen more, more, eh, more so than Cleo does. And so I like that. The mother was sort of her compass in living in present life, and now that she's passed, she's still being this compass and guide for Cleo through her head and all that sort of stuff. So absolutely loved How to Be a Wallflower by Eloisa James. Um, it's a great start to a new series. I think people that have just finished season two of Bridgerton and really love the Kate Anthony dynamic of enemies to lovers and all that banter of you know, annoyance they have with one another will really enjoy this book. And I definitely think y'all will be seeing this in a few other um, collaborative videos I have been coming up. Um, there's some tropes that I really like, especially the heroine in disguise, which I talked about a few other books ago. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, as well as comment. You can also follow me on Instagram and TikTok at I'll Be Reading Romance. Have a wonderful day, and I'll see y'all soon. Bye, everyone.